Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'd like to introduce Deputy Sheriff Pete Sanko, who served the United States Army 80th Mortar Transportation Division for Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri, and he has been at Lackawanna County Sheriff since 2010. I'd like to thank you for your service. The floor is yours. Thank you, Commissioner. Anybody, please rise, put right hand over heart. Any former soldiers, you can salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag. To the flag. United, United States, States of America, America to, to the, the Republic, Republic for which stands one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, for the last three years, three years and so many months, we've always we always talk about our servicemen and women that that have lost their lives defending our country, and we always talk about our first responders. And uh, and you know, when we first really started this. I never thought it would be to a point where, like, like I'm talking about an average of at least three law enforcement people that are dying, deputy sheriffs, feds, police, you, you name it, um, corrections. It, it's, it's real rampant. And I, I, I never thought, like, it's hundreds at this point, hundreds in the last three years. And um, I, I would just like to just say, you know what I mean, that our first responders really deserve our utmost respect. They protect us in our homes. They protect us at work. They protect the streets. They're a first line of defense against terrorism. And please, like, you know, if you're told by someone in law enforcement what to do and how to do it, listen, you know, I mean, that's their job, you know, and it's, you know, it's not an easy job and they want to get home with their family just like every one of us does. And they give us the opportunity to be able to do that because they're making sure those that are on the street that are committing crimes are kept off the streets and they're making sure that we're safe so please you know just really keep them in your thoughts and prayers At this time I'd like to um, announce Sergeant Stephen Hinkle who succumbed to a gunshot wound sustained in a highway stop he's um, from Sullivan County Sheriff's Department office in Tennessee also we have Midland Police Department Texas Police officer Nathan Heldenberg was shot and killed while responding to a burglar alarm at a residence. Please keep these heroes in our thoughts and prayers and their families and friends and what they do for us every day. Just a moment of silence. Thank you. <coughs> I'd like to bring this Lackawanna County Board of Commissioners meeting to order Wednesday, March 6, 2019 at 10 a.m. in the Commissioner's Conference Room at 123 Wyoming Avenue at the Lackawanna County Government Center at the Globe. I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Yes. 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 We're going to go right into proclamation presentations. Do we have someone here from uh, United Cerebral Palsy of Northeast Pennsylvania? Yes. Would you like to come up to the podium? <coughs> Let's talk about United Cerebral Palsy and uh, good morning. How going and Thank how you. the viewing audience might be able to help or you know or be involved in the organization and you know contribute to whatever you may need. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning. Um, my name is Sarah Drab. Uh, I am the Chief Executive Officer with United Cerebral Palsy of Northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, March is uh, Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month and it also is Intellectual Disabilities Awareness Month. We are a private nonprofit organization. We provide supports and services to individuals with disabilities. Uh, we serve individuals um, primarily who do have uh, an intellectual disability and may also have other co-occurring disabilities. Like many organizations in our area, we were founded by a core group of parents whose uh, young adults uh, were looking for work activities and things to do. Um, we were a little over 66 years old. Uh, we've been in Lackawanna County since then. And from those original starts of looking for opportunities for young adults with cerebral palsy and as times have changed and services have been made available and funding for those services has happened we've grown into the organization we are today uh, we do residential services adult day services uh, we have a um, 
an advocacy program. We are an early intervention provider, birth to tree, in Lackawanna and Susquehanna and Wayne counties. And we also are the conduit to what's called the Assistive Technology Resource Center for a six county area. On a whole, we probably touch about 500 lives a year, uh, and depending on what those supports and services may need. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be here today and uh, to let everybody know about Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month and Intellectual Disabilities Awareness Month. And we appreciate the support uh, of our community and ensuring that the people that we support and serve live the lives that they're looking to do and looking to be. I'm not sure if you have any questions for me or anything you'd like me to touch on. I'd like to thank you for what you do every day. And um, we'd like to thank those parents because you know back in the, at that time, no one had a clue Exactly. They were concerned about their children. You mean, just like any any parent, you know, I mean, you want to make sure your child's protected, safe, feeling well, you know, become productive adults, and you know, I mean, you're, you mean, you want to make sure that your children outlive you. you know, I mean, that's what I think a parent's job is, their ultimate job. Well, is exactly, to make sure and that, that, and and again, we serve all age groups. We serve young children. We serve adolescents. We serve young adults. We serve seniors. Uh, we serve individuals across the board. Um, and it is our primary mission to support those individuals as they build and lead the, their lives in the community. What is it they want? What do they want to do? Where do they want to be? And how do they want to be? And it's our role and function and our privilege to be able to support them as th that happens in their lives. So it really is our honor, and we appreciate you know the opportunity. No, we're thrilled to have you here. Thank you. We uh, we un we have an understanding what's you know I mean what you do and how much your impact is uh, immense to the community. Uh, Commissioner Cummings. Yeah. Do you um, provide housing as well, or no? Do you help in that area? Housing, in the terms of we provide residential services, we do operate what are called licensed community living arrangements. That's right, yeah. So what people refer to as group homes. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes. That's <clears throat> that's such a difficult. Um, Feel to work and you have to be very compassionate and understanding and are you having a hard time finding staff or are you okay on staffing across the state actually and unfortunately across the country there is a staffing crisis yeah. in regards to have being able to recruit and retain the staff that we do need to support individuals in their homes yeah well you're very dedicated it really truly is um, as you said there's a lot to that there's a lot of things that happen uh, we are licensed by the state there's a lot of things that we do there's a lot of responsibility placed on people um, in ensuring that the individuals we support are safe and happy and healthy and living the lives that they want to live so yes um, we are always actively recruiting uh, for staff. if someone wanted to um, call for employment where would they reach you at our office number is 570-347 three three five seven and our office our main office is at 425 Wyoming Avenue just down the street um, people are more than welcome to come in they can also go online uh, ucpnepa.org uh, we have our application online it can be submitted uh, by email uh, the, mm -hmm, we just changed our email info at ucpnepa.org and you can stop or fax it Thank you so much, and thank you for the work that you do. I greatly appreciate it, and thank you for coming in. Thank you. We appreciate being here. Commissioner Terry. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for uh, your good works, and uh, keep up the great job, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to continue on and be even more successful in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Um, March is Cerebral Palsy Month, and we're going to be reading a, reading a proclamation in just a minute. Um, also, um, Raise your awareness, uh, UCP of Northeast PA is asking for local communities to go green. It's a good month to do it in. <laughs> On March 25th, 2019, to honor the 17 min million individuals and their families affected with cerebral palsy. So everyone, please remember March 25th, 2019 is go green to honor the 17 million individuals and those families. You know, thank, you know, thank God for those families. They're, um, what a great support they have and, and, like in, and the organizations, especially United Cerebral Palsy of Northeast PA that's here today. It really matters to all of us. Um, I had a good friend, I'm not gonna say his name, he just passed away. He had cerebral palsy all the way through from, um, from elementary school and through high school. And he, uh, he, he was just like one of us. He was one of my closest friends. I mean, he had his issues because of cerebral palsy, but he was, you know I mean? We all treated him the same. He went out for sports and stuff, it was tough on him. You know what I mean? But he, we always made sure that he was part of the crew. He always was. 
He passed away a couple months ago. He was a good, sorry good for person. Your loss. Yeah, I'd love to say his name, but no, he was a he was one of a kind. Um, he had, he had a family, couple couple well, I children. I think that's the reality. That, yeah. you know, that is part of what you know we look to do. And, and he had the outward form. Exactly. Like, I mean, it was there. You know, people I mean, you with disabilities are people. Yeah. yeah, people want to live their lives in the community. They yeah, want, people want yeah. to live their lives. Yeah, I knew they want to go to work. They want elementary to go to the and graduated with them. Yeah, <laughs> they want to go to church. Yes, they want to do. They want to be involved in things. They want to volunteer. They want, they want to live their lives. Yeah. And and we're fortunate enough to be able to help support them in doing that and being part of our community. Yeah. And it's it's interesting that people that have such disabilities are actually out there, um, working and you know doing what they need to do to have a productive life. So many don't, <clears throat> but yet we have these people who are actually, um, you know, fighting the good fight and out there working. And God bless them for what they do because. You know, they're not sitting at home. They're actually out in the community working, um, which is a testament to you for the work that you do. So thank you so much for being an, an inspiration to them and to all of us. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. We appreciate it. We have a proclamation. Whereas United Cerebral Palsy of <coughs> Northeast Pennsylvania provides opportunities and resources to individuals with disabilities as they build and lead their lives in the community. Whereas UCP of Northeast PA provides an array of services for children, adults with various disabilities, including advocacy, home and community supports, and education in Lackawanna, Susquehanna, Wayne, Wyoming, Pike, Bradford, Monroe, and Sullivan counties. Whereas the UCP of Lackawanna County first opened the doors in 1953 and established a home office in 1958. And you know that all started with like a bunch of parents, parents. in a household oh, yeah. and somebody said, you know, like we got to really do something about this. Yeah. Always Our children need help and they need to find a way to get them that Stepped home. Stepped up and did it. Yeah. Established a home office in 1958 and began providing early intervention services and home services in 1965. In 1975, the first community living arrangement was open with 20 years and 20 years later, the ascent, the assistive technology program was created to assist both individuals with any disabilities and older individuals in the community whereas on Monday March 25th 2019 UCP of Northeast Pennsylvania will celebrate cerebral palsy day in honor of the 17 million individuals and their families affected with cerebral palsy now therefore on behalf of the 214,000 citizens we Patrick O'Malley Jerry Notariani and Lorraine A. Cummings, Commissioners of the County of Lackawanna, Pennsylvania, do hereby support the United Cerebral Palsy of Northeast Pennsylvania into the cerebral palsy awareness efforts and proclaim March 19th, at March of 2019, as Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month in Lackawanna County. Would you like to come forward? Yes. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you so much you. for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Barb is our board president. Oh, oh I didn't realize I wish she was involved. Barb, congratulations. Thanks for your work. You see, Patrick's back. How are you? Barb is our board president. Thank you very much. And Ray is our director of communications. We'll put Barb in the middle. Yep. Put Sarah. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Tell, tell, short cut. There you go. Just a little this way. Which one? Can I touch your water bottle? Sure. <laughs> there we go. Here we are, everybody. One, two, three. Smile. We'll take a couple of them. Slash now. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Um, at this time, I'd like to, is uh, Eric Bossart here? Eric, would you like to come up to the podium? This is, um, I know this is near, this is near and dear. It's to business. What's that? No business? No. no. Right 
did, didn't have one yet. For next one, they'll have one. Eric um, saw you in the paper. You know, and I had an opportunity to get down to uh, see your mural down at the down at the um, steam town oh, and thank the you. marketplace of the steam town and um and this board of commissioners um, has always been there you know we, to try to stop you know this crisis with the opioids and um, I think your mural and I and I wish I could I wish I blew up the picture but it's a picture of a of a grandmother holding a, a baby because the parents just can't be there because the fact that they have an addiction or they could be just not to be dead and yeah. it really hits home and it's real heart-wrenching and you know we, we see it every day we see it in the obituaries some people say what's going on some people just might not but it's it's happening it's you bad know, and this board of commissioners one of the first counties in the commonwealth of pennsylvania to sue the pharmaceutical companies right. because all of us in this room we trust our family physicians our surgeons our doctors whoever it may be and they were misled too that's right and um they were told that these drugs weren't going to be addictive and they were and a lot of good people died because of this and um we brought you in because your picture is just one of those pictures that just really hits home and shows the reality of of what it is you know and um i've seen it at different elementary schools a lot of grandparents watching their kids and I know some of them are probably because of addiction I know it so can I see we'd like to just uh, tell us about how did you come up with it like it was really brilliant actually I thought it was a brilliant picture sure. really depicted what you know what I mean what's what the end is of it all yeah uh, well um when you're making a mural, really yeah. the, the main goal of it, aside from beautifying the community, mm -hmm. is you want to kind of create and inspire change and improve the community <coughs> that the mural's in, right? So uh, I wanted it to be thought-provoking, but also kind of beautiful to look at. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, I wanted to focus on, rather than a more morbid issue, Yeah, I wanted to focus on like the, the loving aspect of it, like the... Um, sort of the compassion that the grandmother has for the child. Sure. And then it sort of provokes thought about the deeper undertones and the darker things and the death, addiction, overdose. But, you know, you're, it's not like I didn't want to put that up on the wall. Yeah. I still wanted the wall to the look. The picture says it all. Like, you can look at it. What it, what it says to me is it says um, that the grandma, who has already raised her children, is in her golden years, mm -hmm. is stepping up the plate again to raise another generation or ho and, and hoping that, their children, their babies, which even though you're an adult, your parents always feel that you're their babies, no matter what. I still feel the way it gets my, to my 17-year-old, 11-year-old, that that their child would get better and be able to take over and be a parent again. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely what I was focusing on, yeah. like the, uh, with like the symbolism and everything and the, and the keys. And the, I mean, a lot of times the grandparents because of the high financial strain yeah. of raising a child again, they have to re-enter the workforce with menial jobs. Yeah, that's why I included the uh, fast food worker uniform. Yeah, I was yeah I, I I was I was just, I didn't really understand I, I didn't get that part. But yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah, they're on a fixed income. They got a baby. You know, Similac costs a lot of money. Diapers. Yeah, it's it's a big it's a big undertaking. It really is. But it really hit home with the board of commissioners. So. Thank you. I just want to bring you in and acknowledge you for what you did, and we got a certificate for you. But at this time, Commissioner Cummings? Yeah, um, you know, I'm just looking at the picture. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, bright purple poppy flowers, the plant source of heroin, surround the two. A kind of wanted to show that it's not an inherently bad thing, the flower. It's kind of what societally we've done with it, perverted it. He said, ultimately, I want it to be aesthetically beautiful. The point of a mural should be brighten our neighborhood and then maybe even inspire a little positive change. You know, when, um, when I first got involved in this, I got involved because of the fact that I've had many, well, I grew up in a foster home. So, um, you know, I was raised by uh, parents that uh, took me in out of the goodness of their heart because my uh, parents could not raise me due to addiction. Um, you know, I... Uh, I've seen it as a nurse. I've seen it throughout the years. I've seen it in my family. 
Um, I deal with it every single day, <laughs> just like so many of us do. So I was fighting this for years, this opioid crisis, trying to learn how it started, where it began. Um, and you know, I first went after the doctors for prescribing it. And the doctors pushed back at me and said, no, it's not us. We're being made by the state and the federal government to do this because pain was changed to a vital sign. So I was like, well, how did that happen? Well, Purdue Pharmaceutical came in with their huge marketing campaign and twisted the narrative and their marketing with all the money that these companies have made people believe that Americans weren't treating their veterans for pain well enough. So the VA decided to help push that narrative of putting pain as a vital sign. What did that do? That created these little um, smiley faces we see uh, when you go into the doctor's office, you know, how they say, the can you rate time. your pain, you know, um, on a scale from one to 10 and uh, negative uh, unhappy face and a happy face. Um, and then the insurance companies got involved and funding was denied to those that weren't uh, treating their, pa their patients' pain well enough through the satisfaction survey results. And it was a downward spiral where um, doctors were being sued based on the fact that they weren't treating pain well enough. This is how it happened just from 2001. A and and a, a crisis was created, a manufactured crisis, by big pharma and big government. And they created this, this crisis that all of us had, have had to watch. And, um, you know, when I went out to uh, National Association of County Organizations and, uh, you know, told them why aren't we suing the pharmaceutical companies because they're at fault for this along with the government. And they said that there, there was two other places that did it. And I came back and told my fellow commissioners and they started making calls and uh, we got it done. We're the first county to sue the pharmaceutical companies. And, you know, I'm very proud of that. And I, you know, I thank my fellow commissioners for working with me on that because never in a million years did I think from going from where I came from to right now that I would be able to affect change in such a big way and hold people accountable for what they've done to, you know, my parents, my family members, my fellow uh, citizens in this area and in the state of Pennsylvania. So your mural represents that whole entire thing. Thank you so much. It's, it's beautiful and I greatly appreciate the work you're doing and for bringing the attention um, to the public. That means so much to me. Great job. Thank you. Commissioner Terry, it's a uh, beautiful mural. Uh, your your artistic flair is uh, amazing. Beautiful. Uh, what, how you came up with the concept and, and put it all together and uh, gave it to uh, the citizens of Lackawanna County is really appreciated. And uh, mm -hmm. you're a young man. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Um, this uh, epidemic is horrible. Yet every family, or at least friends or somebody that you know it really has my family it's hit other commissioners families it really has it's been you know it's been very trying and um, like you said your mural really speaks volume to uh, the effect and the after effect of what it could be or what it is what it is what's going on actually so we're just very happy to have you here at the board of commissioners to, to acknowledge you and yes. acknowledge what a great job you did over at the the mall it looks great it really does we have a certificate of recognition the county board of commissioners does hereby recognize eric bassart in honor of achieving a designation of an individual providing great works in lackawanna county given the sixth day of march of 2019 by the board of commissioners would you like to come forward congratulations sure. Funny how a simple plant can destroy a nation. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Have a good day. Thank you. Tracy, you're right. It is hot in here. Okay. Opportunity for the public to address board on agenda items only. Okay. 
approving the current payable. It's be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby approve the following payables. Lackawanna County General Fund numbers from 277-689 through 277-942 inclusive totaling $902,886.22. Electronic fund transfers including all payroll accounts totaling $4,711,764.18. Okay. Gary, is everything up to snuff on it? Yes, commissioners. All payables are in order and have been audited. And there are no uh, legal fees, legal, legal invoices regarding the uh, prison probe. Does the board have any questions? No, thank you. I'd like to make a motion approve approving current payables. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Roll call. Yes. 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 Nineteen dash zero zero four five. Approving the audit for the Land Bank Authority, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby approve the Lackawanna County Land Bank Authority audit for the year ending ended December thirty first. 2018 to Joseph M. Alou and Associates, 321 Spruce Street, Suite 1000, Scranton, PA, 18503, to cost $1,700. Tom? Good morning, Commissioners. Um, morning. As we do every year, um, most of the component unit audits that we do in the county that we need to get done for the, um, the county's annual audit as well as uh, the land bank is not a component unit, but it's a related entity. <clears throat> so um, every year I come to the Board of Commissioners and uh, we usually have a handful of audits that we ask the commissioners to approve the engagement with uh, many varied firms. And uh, in this case, the land bank, land bank audit has been done by Joe Lou and Associates for a couple of years now and we're just asking to renew that a contract. Okay. Does the board have any questions? They pay for that on their own, out of their own budget, right? We don't pay for that. They do. Sure. We don't pay for that, Commissioner. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I'd like to make a motion approving the audit of the Land Bank Authority. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. 19-0046. Approving the audit for the Redevelopment Authority be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby approve the Lackawanna County Redevelopment Authority audit for the year ended December 31st, 2018 to Joseph M. Alou and Associates, 321 Spruce Street, Suite 1000, Scranton, PA, 18503 to cost $1,700. And again, uh, Lackawanna County CFO Tom Durkin to speak. Thank you. Um, again, very similar to the land bank audit, the redevelopment authority needs an annual audit so that we can include that information in the uh, annual county audit. And uh, Joe Alou has done this audit for at least the last four or five years, and we're just asking to renew that engagement. Does the board have any questions? No. Okay. I'd like to make a motion approving audit for the redevelopment authority. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. And if I may add, excuse me, Commissioner, this is also paid by the Redevelopment Authority, not by the county. So I saw that in the okay. contract. Nice Thanks. tie. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank yes, you very much. Yes, we're all going in the green rotation. today. That's right. Everybody's got the green today. Uh, you. Uh, you know, I, I <laughs> forgot to bring this up. Um, I'd like to welcome our new Chief of Staff here today, Fran Pantuso, who moved up through the ranks and is doing a great job. What do you think so far? Everything going all right? Hey, so women far? are taking over the world, yeah. man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, friend. Okay, 19 0047. Designating an agent for Pima applications. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby designate the Director of Roads and Bridges as the agent to the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, Pima, and does hereby authorize the agent to fill the necessary applications and required forms and documents for the purpose of obtaining financial assistance relating to Pima for disaster reimbursements related to Lackawanna County under the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act. Here to speak on it is our Director of Roads and Bridges, Larry Lukasik. Good morning, Good morning Larry. Commissioners. 
Hi, Larry. Uh, on August 10th to August 15th of 2018, Lackawanna County and surrounding areas uh, were hit with some pretty severe storms, and we suffered a lot of damage, as some of our neighboring counties did also. FEMA came in and did an evaluation of all the damage, and on November 27th of 2018, they declared Lackawanna County a disaster area, which means now we can go back and get money to recoup some of the costs that we used to fix the damage and also for some money for the things we didn't fix yet. Um, but to do that, we need a designation of applicant agent signed, and we need a resolution passed, making me eligible to sign all the necessary paperwork. And that's what I'm here to ask for today. Good. Um, Commissioner Cummings? Yeah, I was just curious because I saw the previous commissioners in here. Is this an older resolution or? Yeah, yeah that's probably one of the older. I've, I've been through four disasters already, five disasters yeah. already. Commissioner, so that uh, every so many years it has to be renewed. So this is a renewal of the process to allow Larry as our director of roads and bridges. Uh, the old one expired or is expiring, uh, I believe. So that was formed under, that was signed under the former board of commissioners. Because 2014. So are we going to have a s new signed one for current or is this going to remain the one that is... So no, we're going to have a new forward. one for you to sign. Yeah, just okay. a new one for you to sign. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Larry, let's just thank you for the great job that you guys do. It's no removal and making sure the streets are safe and the, make sure our bridges are in good shape. Thank so you, sir. Thank you. We got a lot of compliments on your work, Larry. Yeah. So you did a good job. You know, when we did have all those snowstorms, our roads were, were taken care of. Thank you for your work. Commissioner Tiriani? No, that's a great job there. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'd like to make a motion designating an agent for Pima applications. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani. Yes. Commissioner Cummings. Yes. Commissioner O'Malley. Yes. Thanks, Larry. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. 19-0048. Approving a modified intermediate punishment grant. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby approve the project modification submission for additional funding of $6,000 per year for transportation for the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency PCCD grant application submitted by Lackawanna County Treatment Court for the County Intermediate Punishment CIP Treatment Program. Here to speak on that is Mary Liz Loftus. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? Good morning. Good, morning. Good. How are you? Good. So I am looking to add some more money. They, um, Pennsylvania Crime um, sent out an email last month saying that if we needed more money, we can do a project modification to the grant. So that's what I'm requesting, that we do an extra $500 per month to help pay for um, bus passes and also for taxi service when the buses aren't running at night. Um, most of our clients don't have their driver's license. Um, some of them just can't afford to own a car. So this is a big help for them to get to their um, outpatient appointments, come down to meet us at probation, get to treatment court. So we're just looking to uh, add a little bit more money to our transportation budget with this grant. Commissioner Cummings? So this is specifically for transportation for those that don't have vehicles, correct? That's it? Or Correct. And, or don't have their driver's license. The people, Some people in DUI court get the bus passes also. Mm -hmm. So um, we have had used other grants, and the Treatment Court Advocacy Center also um, has grant money that we use to pay for the bus passes. But um, we're getting more and more people in treatment court. So our Yeah, it's terrible, running. isn't it? It is. So it's just terrible. Like you guys were saying earlier, you know, it definitely is an epidemic. And... Um, you know, as far as my role, also anything that you guys need help for with this, I am willing to help. Also, just to let you know, if you need me to go Thank anywhere, you. do anything. Thank you. Thank you for all your work. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> well, we'll just sit down. Thank you. Yes. Um, Commissioner Notarini. I have no questions. Uh, I think this is good. This will be helpful for people that are you know, that might not have the money or they just have, don't have their license, and they have to get to these meetings and they have to get downtown. If they don't, they get in trouble. Correct. We got to make sure that everybody, you know, most of them don't. I mean, come on, they don't even have a job. So it's terrible. It's yeah. terrible what's happening. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion approving and modifying an intermediate punishment grant. Do I have a second? Second. R roll call. Commissioner Tiriani. Yes. Commissioner Cummings. Yes. Commissioner O'Malley. Yes. Nineteen dash zero zero four. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Can I just ask one more? How do they become eligible for this? How do they know how to how to apply? Is this something that they're told when they come in for rehab or? Oh, for treatment court. Yeah. They, uh, their lawyer. Their lawyers are where the. Mm -hmm. Okay. What if they don't have a lawyer? A public defender. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
they can help them. Um, also, just to let you guys know, I'm going to send you an invite, but we have our graduation on May 9th at 5 p.m. over at Lackawanna College. If you're interested yeah. in coming to that, it's nice to see the whole. We'd like to be able to, yeah. The people get better. So I'll email it over to Tracy. Yeah, now. it's good to see the end result. That's really good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's hard for them. Thank you. 19 0049. Approving provider contracts for the office of BH ID. EI. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby approve the provider contracts between the Department of Human Services, Lackawanna, Susquehanna Behavioral Health, Intellectual Disability, Early Intervention Program, and their providers for the fiscal year of 2018 through 2019 as attached hereto. Okay. Here to speak on this is Mary Ann Colbert. Good morning, Mary Ann. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. So presented today for your approval are the Lackawanna Susquehanna Behavioral Health Intellectual Disabilities Early Intervention Program Annual Contracts. We are contracting for fiscal year 1819 with 50 human service providers to meet the needs mm. of approximately 17,500 people in Lackawanna and Susquehanna counties. Um, as you see from the information that we have presented for you, um, some of the highlights of these services uh, housing and supports for people with serious mental illness, sustained housing initiative for people with serious mental illness incarcerated at the Lackawanna County Prison, emergency and crisis services, day supports for people with an intellectual disability and or autism, housing supports for people with an intellectual disability and or autism, employment supports, case management services for children and adults, Occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, special needs instruction for infants and toddlers and their parents and guardians, and an expansion of forensic case management services for people with serious mental illness incarcerated at the Lackawanna County Prison. And I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Does the board have any questions? Okay, I'd like to make a motion approving a provider contract, the Office of BHIDEI. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Cheriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummins? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Thanks for coming, Marin. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good day. You too. That's 13, 13 mil, is that what we're doing? 13 mil on this? Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah. Okay, 15, or excuse me, 19-0053. Appointment to the Lackawanna County Housing Authority, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby reappoint the following individual to the Lackawanna County Housing Authority. Christopher Patrick, 116 Poplar Street, Oliphant, Pennsylvania, 18447, a five-year term to expire on December 31st, 2022. Okay, any questions? I'd like to make a motion for the appointment of Lackawanna County Housing Authority. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Chiriani? No. Commissioner Cummins? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. 19-0054. Appointment to the Lackawanna County Stadium Authority. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby appoint the following individual to the Lackawanna County Stadium Authority. Kevin O'Shea, Oliphant, a five-year term to begin immediately and expire on December 31st, 2022. Okay. I'd like to make a motion for the appointment to Lackawanna County Stadium Authority. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Cheriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Thanks. Opportunity for the public to address the board. Bob, you might want to wait. <laughs> Just try being first again. <laughs> you might want to wait. Apollo Scranton. Frank, congratulations. Uh, I couldn't think of a better person that we have in your position and applaud the commissioners for doing it. She earned that right, she I'll did. tell you that. It's nice to see people who have been around step up the ladder with the dedication she has. I've known Fran literally for a lifetime, so again, congratulations. I'd like to talk a little bit about the uh, lieutenant governor's uh, meeting that I attended, Commissioner Cummings attended. Kind of people in his audience attended too, Bob. Pardon? A lot of people in the audience attended too. No, I understand. I understand. I've seen them all here. 
<laughs> but today I'm addressing the board. I addressed I them at the yeah, meeting. I'm sorry. Okay. And uh, disappointed some that we only had one Scranton councilman show up, Mr. Donahue, and the rest. In. And uh, this is something that's critical and very important. It's important in a lot of aspects. This is recreational marijuana we're talking about. We're not talking about medical. You know, it falls into a lot of different categories. And quite honestly, the uh, lieutenant governor sent me a response thanking me for attending there and if I could do anything with him in the future. So the purpose I was there is on the safety end of it so and what it means. You. Being in the transportation industry and having been in towing and recovery for over 57 years, I've seen just about every type of horrific accident you could think of and for all different circumstances. I've seen them because of drugs, I've seen them because of drinking, I've seen them just incompetent. But well, we could take a 16-year-old kid, and I'll just use that as an example, let him smoke his recreational marijuana, let him drive down on a snow-covered road, but yet we can't send our experienced truck drivers out on the highway because they're not qualified. But we could let somebody smoke recreational marijuana and drive in snow that they've never driven on. Mm -hmm. And then one day we wonder why we see the hearse going by and everybody feeling bad, putting out flowers and plants and saying, geez, he was a great kid. I've seen them hit trucks head on. I've seen just about every kind of horrific accident you could think of. I was awarded by the uh, Florida State police an accommodation for my heroic actions I went head-to-head -head with a wrong way driver on I-75 in Ellington Florida all by Sarasota and I stopped her when I went to get her out of the car and she finally put the window down before I had to smash it the whiff of marijuana came out she was high on marijuana and drinking she was out to kill herself I got her out of the car got the car off the road she tried running back into the highway and I had to hold on to her and had a big argument with a 911 uh, uh, operator as to what my emergency was. But this is a drug, whether you want to call it a plant from God, whatever you want to call it, it's an hallucination. Mm -hmm. It creates a problem, and everybody could have their own opinion on it. But when it happens to you, and it's one of your family members, you can't talk about it anymore because it's now become a reality. It's okay to smoke it. It's okay to do what you want to do and say, geez, it doesn't bother me. I'm great. Wrong. It does bother you. You want to see a guy flying a plane, police officer carrying a weapon? How about an EMT when you're in an emergency? We talked about first responders. I am a first responder, and I am EMT certified. I've been in all aspects. I drive a fire truck up in Troop. Do I need to do it? No. But at least I'm not smoking a joint when I go out on it. And that's the difference. How do we control our drivers? How do you control the prison and tell the prisoner he can't smoke mar uh, recreational marijuana at the jail now? You're going to have more constitutional issues than you could even think of by trying to stop this and stop somebody from doing it or allowing them to do it. I'm not here to advocate it. I'm totally opposed to it. I made that very, very clear. Other people have their opinions, and that's what this country is about. We're all welcome to an opinion. But I was disappointed that I didn't see more public officials because you were the guys ultimately who were going to have to go to battle for all of us in this county and throughout this state. Adjoining states have it. Go to Colorado. I yes. have relatives, I have family, I've been in and out of Colorado, see what's going on out there. And then say it's great. Commissioner Cummins stood up, she knows about it, she's a nurse, she's seen it from the medical end, she's seen it from both sides. And I've seen it in my industry and other industries. I've traveled all over the world, so it's not like I'm just some novice standing up here uh, running yeah. off at the mouth. People have to understand, while you may be self-serving, for yourself, take into consideration the life you take tomorrow doesn't come back again. Of a child, a family, think very seriously what you're trying to do here. You're walking around with a loaded weapon. 
are. Just when <clears throat> you decide to pull the trigger. So that's where we are on that, and that's my opinion, and I'll go to my grave with it because if we allow this to happen, it's shame on all of us. And I can't help some of the people that are all for it and think it's the greatest thing since uh, cottage cheese. It's the wrongest idea because your life is in your hands, but so is our life in your hands as well. That's right. When you get down the road. Okay, okay guys, listen, listen, yeah, listen. Get your opportunity. Well, decorum, yeah. No, I'm speaking. I'm speaking in general. Okay, I'm looking okay, at your guys, face. Guys, 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 guys. I'm going to tell you. Okay, okay guys, Bob. guys, Bob. guys, Bob. guys, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa! There's no. Listen, people come to the podium. They have their time to speak. Okay, okay. Now that's for everyone to come up. What's they that now? All, they could all get their opportunity. I made this a general statement, as I did at the governor's meeting. Was a general meeting to everybody, and I had people challenging me right then and there, just as I'm getting here. They're all welcome to their opinion. It's on their head, not mine, because my conscience is clear. No employee of mine will ever, ever get in a vehicle smoking a joint or having anything to do with it, whether it's medical or otherwise. They will be restricted for a period of time before they drive a vehicle on the highway and put us at risk as the owners. The other part was, and uh, I've been bringing this up time and time again, is Joe Joyce wearing two hats in the tax office. Joyce and Kel, uh, Kislowski, or Ron did uh, Kolodzewski, created a living hell for our companies by filing a tax judgment on me personally rather than against the real estate that still exists to this day forcing us to put companies in bankruptcy because we had no choice including myself that was done personally and my personal assets fund all the corporations and it's put them all in jeopardy new equipment different things we were doing in fact we had a major liquidation of a lot of stuff and closed five locations because of this action and I brought it here time and time again, and that man still sits in that same position as the solicitor and the tax collector. It's a conflict of interest, and it's a, putting this county on a road to disaster. And I brought it up time and time again. You need to make a change. You can no longer allow this to cons go on. Commissioner Cummings had brought it up a long time ago when they were talking about putting judgments on individuals. She's the only one that stood for it. You guys are allowing it to take place. You got to do something about it. The responsibility, again, lies on your side of the fence. I brought up about prison pillows. I may not make the next prison board meeting, but we got hundreds of thousands of dollars for every kind of study, but you can't give them pillows that are reusable at I the jail you. by, bless you, by, uh, sitting there and saying, oh, they could buy them at the commissary. They get ripped off on the phones, they get ripped off on the commissary, and they got to pay for their medical. You could at least fund the pillows. They're reusable. That's the least we could do at that prison. I spent the time there, and I told you they were wrong. It created a lot of issues. I said about the inadequate uh, medical treatment you received there from Zalogo and his group. Yet you guys still persist to put them there. Go talk to prisoners. Go to the jail and find out what really goes on. And I think you'll make the changes. But if I can't make the next prison board meeting, since you guys are the fund for the prison board, buy the pillows. I spoke to Mike Lindell's company, and we could get them at wholesale price that qualify for the jail. You know, this past week has been a nasty week in politics. I think you're all aware of it. The character assassination on Mr. Scavo, I think is totally unjustified. I wrote a letter to the Scranton Times. Hopefully they'll have the courage to print it. I know what it is to be around radical Islamic terrorists. I know what it is. I've been there. I've been in those countries. I've been in Kuwait, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Iraq, Iran, 
Yemen, I've been there, I've done business there. I know it is to be shot at over there. Okay, and for everybody to come in here and assassinate his character like they're doing now is pathetic over the Muslim faith. Everybody has a right to their religion, whether it's Catholic, Protestant, German, or <coughs> Muslims. But to say that he was making all Muslims, no. It's our radical Islamic terrorist. Remember 9-11? Remember the, our news uh, reporter who had his head uh, decapitated on TV for them? Those are the sick people that he was referencing. And to be characterizing them on everybody, I think is totally wrong because of political parties. You know, let's choose our candidates by the individual and not what people want to try and represent. And I think it's totally wrong. And that goes for all of us that have all ran for office. I have, you guys are here, and there'll be other people running. But to uh, do what they're doing and the press and the media over this, uh, they've got to go really learn what the heck they're talking about. And when you have, a, I have many friends that are Muslims here in the States and abroad. They're not sitting here coming around and saying we're going to blow up your city tomorrow morning. And that's the difference that goes on. And uh, the kid that did the mural I think is credible. You know, it shows what some of our youth really know and really think and are making a difference in the direction we should go in because they are the future leaders and they have to get that through their head today. You know, the last thing we got to do is uh, just let this go on and on and on with the uh, drugs, and the marijuana, bury our heads in the sand, see where your future leaders take you. And it's down the road to disaster. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Name, name and address? Yep, Jeff Zick, 127 West Market Street. I'm sorry, what was your name? Jeff Zick, Z-I-C-K. Oh, okay. All right, uh, lies and hate, you know? That's all I hear. Uh, last Saturday was a great show of democracy. Lackawanna County played host to our governor, you know, which is a pretty big honor. Well, the citizens of Lackawanna County and surrounding counties who can make it came down and had, you know, had their say which majority in the support for legalization for adults, adults, recreation, not 16-year-old kids driving down the road. This is lies and manipulation. All right, I'm one of the future leaders he's talking about. Lackawanna County is, you know, not deciding, you know, the district attorney himself is deciding not to decriminalize cannabis possession in small amounts in the city of Scranton yeah. because, you know, he, he's afraid of, uh, you know, I don't know what he's afraid of, but, when it comes down to it, Lackawanna County has not arrested cocaine dealers and, you know, people who, you know, possess cocaine and uh, opium. You know, we're looking at 13 arrests so far this year. Well, that's at least what they're reporting on the uniform uh, police crime report here. Uh, we have 45 arrests for small possession of cannabis. Okay, now you guys are asking for more money for, you know, treatment services and stuff. Well, these people who are caught with small amount of cannabis are all put through treatment. All of them, every single one of them, put through treatment, you know, along with the addicts, you know. So that's that's a good uh, way of saving money there. Um, and you know, going back to that meeting we had last Saturday, uh, Miss Cummings couldn't even stand to stay the rest of the meeting. You know, the governor asked her to please keep it down, and she just walked out the door. She walked out the door because a disabled man got up and spoke. On, you know, had the courage to get up to the microphone and speak in this great You know, he's no longer state. disabled from what he said. I would, can I please finish my sentence? Sure. Um, you know, he, uh, he spoke on the miracles that cannabis played in his life since he was a child. He got up and showed you that he can walk with, he, he explained his condition. He explained that he was bone on bone and he got up and showed you, you stormed out. You couldn't, you couldn't bear to stand there and watch that man tell his story. There are thousands of people in the state telling that story right now. And what you did was a shame to Lackawanna County. You made us famous. And that's not good. Lackawanna County is a great county. 
And to have this happen to our disabled people will not stand, and we will not stand by it. You may not agree with us, you may spread lies, but the truth is known. This needs to stop. You know, it, it needs to end right here. No more picking on disabled people. No more picking on medical patients. You know, it, it's it's got to stop. Let him sit you know, so relax. we're asking we're asking for an apology to this man, or a letter recognize. Right, you can you not listen to me. They refuse to listen. Um, have a great day. My name is Lacey Walker. I live at 204 Landstone in Clark Summit. Um, I actually have a copy of some of the comments that Ms. Cummings made on Facebook. Um, she said, I have just witnessed the biggest sideshow at the listening tour I have ever seen. If these are the people that are representative of this administration, we are doomed. People enter the room in a wheelchair due to a broken back, and then when, st or then when speaking, stand up and walk to the podium claiming the almighty pot plant healed him. Are you kidding me? Ma'am, I'm disabled. I'm sorry that I can walk, and I'm sorry that my disability is upsetting to you, but cannabis gave me my life back. It didn't cure me like you asked me on your Facebook page before you blocked me, for whatever reason, because I don't really know. You're not really allowed to do that to your constituents when they're criticizing you. So you also said, potheads from across the state claiming pot cured dogs and every ailment you could think of, and they call me crazy. Wow, what a bunch of lunatics. Penn State campus listening tour with the lieutenant governor. It was nothing but potheads and drug dealers. And you're smiling at me. I don't understand. Can you explain to me why you're smiling at me, Ms. Cummings? I'm not smiling at you. Then why are you smiling? Okay, I'm listening to what you're saying. Yeah. But you're smirking at me. So that's why I'm wondering what you're thinking. Why, I'm what, at are Bob. Your, what are your feelings on your statements? You're here basically to talk about what your thoughts I'm, are. I am, yeah, and I'm I, very upset as a disabled woman. This I'm very no, upset. No, we're, we're, this has no bearing in, like this, in this hearing. That was my personal page. That was not on my commissioner's page. I'm trying. Page. Yeah. True. That's fine. None of that was on my commissioner's page. That was no, my it was on your page. personal page, which is public. Listen, I'm not going to let her sit here and lie about what was on a page. Okay? I have copies of it. <laughs> <laughs> Legally, I can block you on my personal page. You have no right to okay, even be well, up here. Okay, well, regardless, you also threatened Joe Bickelman. Okay, and you also threatened Joe Bickelman, saying, I know quite a few people in your neck of the woods. Maybe I will make calls of my own. Right after he threatened my life. Threatened Where? me. Where? Listen, you want to bring him up to my lawyer? That's fine. Absolutely. I'd be happy to show my attorney all this. Okay, and I will Happy show you. to. Happy to. So, medical cannabis. You also recently said, are you kidding me? The legislator, the legislature voted to legalize this stuff. You didn't even know we were legally allowed to use our medicine in the state. Listen, are you here for I'm here a back I'm and a forth with me? Because I have an office upstairs I can sit down and talk with you. I will sit down and talk Okay, with well you. then we could do that. Okay. Because we have things on the agenda that we want to get done Bob today. Wallace was allowed that to are sit actually important. and talk to you for like 20 minutes about, I don't even know what. Like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm able to come up here and speak but about he didn't how come I'm up here to attack a commissioner. I'm not represented as a constituent of this county. With falsehoods. So either you're going to discuss issues that are on our agenda that actually deal this with our county. This is off agenda. I was told I'm allowed this to speak is not the about the, this, this is about a personal page, my personal page. Okay, so but it has I'll nothing to do with the county. Recreational legalization and how it can help our community. That would be better. Thank okay. you. In 2017, Global Drug Study covered hundreds of thousands of people around the world, and they have wrecked rec recreational drugs from the safest to the most dangerous based on how many hospital admissions they lead to. Turns out magic mushrooms are responsible for the lowest emergency room visits, magic followed mushrooms. by cannabis, then LSD, and then cocaine. At the other end of the chart, methamphetamine, synthetic cannabis, and alcohol carried the highest risk of a trip to the emergency ward. Mushrooms, the overall hospital visit scorecard looks like 0.2% for mushrooms, 0.6% for cannabis, 1% for LSD, all the way up to almost 5% for methamphetamine and 3.2% for synthetic cannabis. I believe that legalizing recreational cannabis will decrease our crime rate in the city because they are false crimes. I believe that it will lead to a better prison population because we can actually help the people that are in prison for legitimate reasons instead of throwing potheads into prison for no reason. So there's my feeling on why it would benefit. We could benefit from the taxation. We could benefit from just all around less alcohol usage, less overall drug usage elsewhere, and it's a safer choice. So there's my argument for that. 
and I will be making sure to make an appointment with you, Ms. Cummings. Thank That's you. All. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a wonderful day. Hi. My you? name is Robin Hi. Guerrero. I live at 214 Hughes Street. I'm from Luzerne County. And I wasn't able to make it up to Lieutenant Governor's meeting this week, this past weekend. Um, Donnie. But what I saw on Facebook, I did watch the whole video. And what I saw on Facebook was Miss Cummings. This is a personal share, page. This has uh, nothing to do with now, she, 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 We're talking about disabilities here. She this was doesn't just recognized matter. This is, a person, this is about a, I, this as is a, a person, meeting. worked in the disabled field. I took care of in a state, a state institution for 15 years I worked with disabled individuals before that I was a case manager for children and youth disabled youth my husband is legally blind disabled I was just hurt a few years ago working in the state institution and I am having a hard time getting myself as the provider of my family to go and ask for disability because it's 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 hard for me as a provider and for you to sit and make that meme or, or spread that meme about people with disabilities. I didn't spread that. She needs to be gathered. March, it's March Disability Awareness. They spread that, not me. They spread that around, not me. I'm, Shh, guys, I'm yeah. asking for you guys to look into this. And I'm asking for you to bring Miss Cummings before an ethical committee. Because as Hi, a person who is having a hard time to go apply for disability because I'm a very prideful woman and I took care of my husband all my life with my two I'm children. To, like, this okay, is it's very hard. It's hard to say you're disabled. And you just got, it just recognized cerebral palsy. I worked in a group home for a lot of years, Miss Cummings. Okay, before this, we were talking about the mural and I know a lot of grandparents that are raising their, child, their grandchildren a I'm lot. On. I. I have compassion for that, and you have your 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 right for your your, your opinion, Mr. Bolas. Is that your name? Yes. You have your right you for your. I just thought it was about me as a commissioner. Excuse me, see, but it's a. I I respect page. your like opinion too. But policy. if someone asks me if the doctor is going to smoke a joint or, or or drink before an operation, what would I rather? I wouldn't rather him do any. Okay, we're adults. We're responsible adults, and we know. I am off. I, I had a neck injury that happened at work 10 years ago, 7-7 seven, seven of 06. I've had two back fusions and now the head injury. All that happened in the state, I worked for the state for a lot of years. I gave my time to the state. Um, they had me on fentanyl. They had me on Xanax. They had me on 120 milligrams of morphine on top of a 100 microgram fentanyl patch a day. Then they put me on four milligrams of Xanax a day. I thought I was going to die from or on Xanax. My pain was never controllable. And then they stopped it. This big thing came around. I never abused my drugs. But then this big thing came. And they left us nowhere. I am not a pot smoker. I don't smoke it that much. I really don't. I eat it. I make my own medibles. And these people taught me how to do that. And you know what? I am off all those drugs. All of them, and it's been almost a year that I'm only using medical cannabis. So I want you guys to recognize that this is a good thing that can happen. States, for you guys to arrest people on cannabis, and how many were only arrested on opiates? In Scranton, you guys are doing a disservice. We want tests, Commissioner. We want them. Bring them. But when those tests come out, I'm watching mothers treat adult aut autistic children with high THC and nonverbal become verbal. I'm watching this. It's out there. If you go out and just look, you'll, you'll witness it yourself because there are thousands of us out there that are helping each other. And thank God. Now, my seeds, my seeds don't come medical. My seeds don't come recreational. They're seeds. <clears throat> I need to be able to afford my medicine too. So that's why I want recreational. I'm an adult. I, can, I, I, I should be able to do what I can do, to, especially to treat my pain. So I, I'm very appalled by what happened, especially for people with disabilities. After my whole life, I've been working with pe people with disabilities. And for our own Lieutenant Governor, if y'all didn't see the, 
the video? Please do, because our own lieutenant governor had to scold this woman and ask her to be quiet, and she got up and left. So she's not listening to Lackawanna County people. She's not listening. So please, please listen to your people. To even think that some difference of <clears throat> Yeah, but they won't hear you on ECTV. You got to put. You got to speak in the. Hit the green button, John. There you go. There you go. To even have somebody suggest uh, uh, that that there would be an uh, that there'd be something under the Ethics Act with a disagreement of opinion at a, at a public meeting is laughable and shows a complete lack of understanding. Uh, uh, I understand the person is a, that just spoke is probably a zealot, and that's how zealots act. Thank you, John. Go ahead. Hi. Um, my name, name is Catherine yeah. Bowen. I live in Springbrook, Pennsylvania. I am a constituent of yours. Um, in response to Mr. Bolos's comment, thank you for you know speaking up and your opinion. We appreciate it. We want to hear both sides. Um, but in response to your comment, we are here about we were there about adult use cannabis. Um, adult use. Um, a 16-year-old could a easily just drink, take opioids or any other illegal substance. Um, and drive. Uh, if you're under influence, you know, whether you choose to consume cannabis, alcohol, opioids, or whatever your drug of choice is, it's your personal responsibility. Um, if I decide to drink a bottle of liquor and get behind the wheel of a car, it's my responsibility. I did that. Same thing if you're one of your truck drivers does the same thing, it's their responsibility or your responsibility. Um, you know, right, exactly, permitted or not. Well, you don't allow people to drink, you know, on the job. You shouldn't allow people to smoke cannabis on the they job won't. or do any other drugs on the they job. Won't. Exactly, okay, my point. Um, I have just a question for Ms. Cummings. Um, are all disabled people uh, confined to a wheelchair? Okay, I'm assuming that's a no. Um, so I just want to say, uh, as a representative of this county, you should be embarrassed um, defending your decision, decision to share, whether it's on your personal page or not, opposed shaming a disabled man that uses medical cannabis. As a Christian, as someone in the medical field, and as a human being, I am a constituent and I will be voting against you. Anyone else? Name and address, sir. Uh, my name is Vincent Matchison, 2118 Golden yeah, Avenue, Scranton. Hey, um, I like Ms. Cummings to point out potheads and despicable people that were at that meeting. Well, the people that speak to me like you did in my Facebook, would you like me to go get that email? Sure. The one where you're calling me all kinds of words? Sure. Prove it. I didn't call you anything. I actually, I was very nice to you. No, I have your email. I, I was. I was asking you, who are you calling despicable? potheads and why would you repost such vile things that people are putting out there as a county commissioner Leg legally commissioner I, I would not address any questions on a personal of, of a personal nature that have nothing to do with the issue he wants to speak on the issue let him speak on the issue but legally we're getting that's way that's out of fine. line we're getting way out of that's line fine. here and, and you can see the nastiness coming I, out no I'm not nasty I'm, I'm not trying to be nasty well, at you all. fool everybody else in the room by, by asking a couple of questions I'll take a 10-minute meeting with you if you're willing to. I'd I understand to. that you've had your, your speech earlier that you had issues with yeah, see, drugs that's, that's and the stuff in your family. On, I, I can you. understand where you're coming from. But you also, you know, there's other people that are getting help from this medication. And there's some that aren't. There's some that aren't. And that goes with anything. And there's, there's alcoholics. Some that, well, I'll let you just continue. There's, there's all different kinds of people out there that use and abuse drugs. But then there were people <clears> that aren't using and abusing them, that this medication helps. And That's like passed already. I Medical's like passed already. We're talking recreational. I'm talking about uh, people that can't afford to get their medical card. I'm talking about people that are suffering. They can't afford these two $300 doctors and the $50 cards and all this money that they're trying to make off of sick people. They can't afford to go up and get their card and see doctors and go through all this. So if you like, I'm, and I never said anything nasty to you. I was quite nice to you. If you go back and look up my name, 
you'll see that you probably got me mixed up with somebody else. I would never do that. It's not who I am. But I would like 10 minutes with you to explain where I'm coming from. You explained how you have family members that were addicted. I didn't start smoking and vaping until I was 54 because I got into an accident, worked for a trucking company, okay? And it's helped me. Now, instead of all the arguing, how about we get together? How about we talk about it instead of this? How about we have a meeting with you and see if we can't get something going here? I have never had a problem with anybody coming and meeting with me ever. Well, this is this it. is the reaction of people that, you I know. I understand that, but let's I didn't do this. do this. You all did this, so. Well, I'm trying. I'm this is the way you work. Guys, I'm you're wasting to, a whole lot of time. Of, I'm trying to open it up. Let's have a meeting. Let's have a discussion. Let's sit down. Why hey. keep this going? Why keep Is the Lena still here? media stuff going? Let's talk. Right Where's my Lena? Lena. She's right there. Her assistant's right there. See she Lena right there? Lena, you. raise fine. your hand. Okay. And I appreciate everybody's time here. Sure. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Make an appointment with her. I'd be happy to sit down and talk to any of you. Okay, anyone else? Commissioner Cummings. Okay. Um, first, I'd like to uh, talk about a resolution that I would like to put before the board, and that is something that we've been talking about since um, you know we got uh, into office. Um, Commissioner O'Malley had graciously um, agreed with me not to um, let anyone go because of political reasons at the county level. So I'd like to. Um, make a motion to put a resolution forward to make that a policy of the county. Now, Donnie, if that's something that we need to wait on, I, I'm sure we can do that because I know we, we have could, other. We could draft something for the next meeting, Commissioner, if you well, want. Well, I have something oh. if you want to. Okay. Now, let's, it's let's, long, though, so because of all this, I'd like to hold off. Let's and set it up for the work, next work session. Okay. I, I'm utterly absolutely for it because they've yeah. seen so much money that's been lost here and sure that it, well we've saved thousands yeah. of dollars because well, of this action not. so i would like to just get a yes or no from both of my commissioners to make sure we can pass this resolution when it goes through that's all i want okay and if you want to send it to me i'll look at it and we can get it drafted into can i count on you both for yeah so commissioner o'malley commissioner notariani would you would you agree to a resolution for this i would agree to talking about it yes okay all right thank you uh, that's the first thing um, and I, I really do believe that that's something that we need to do because no one should lose their job because of political affiliation be they Democrat or Republican I just disagree with that and you know it is an election year and come next year I don't want to see somebody losing their job just because of their political affiliation I just don't want to ever see that happen and Commissioner O'Malley you've been a victim of that and it's it's outrageous to do to someone and that's why I wouldn't let it happen and that's why our I know and I didn't realize yeah, that that was why director, yeah, I right. was looking at it purely from a yeah, monetary point son. of view because we save so much money was being fired with a um, a young son a, a brand new baby boy and a six-year-old that had some medical stuff going on at that point yeah and uh, the second thing I want to talk about which is going to be cut short now which I felt was very important was to read Chris Kelly's article in the paper um, but I will refer everyone to that because it was it broke I mean it, you, br you you break down in tears if you read this uh, Chris Kelly grateful columnist takes first steps into a life of sobriety um, I just want to let me look at the camera Chris if you're out there I just want to congratulate you on taking the first step to sobriety and from the bottom of my heart I wish you well because um, I know all too well what you're going through and I personally have not suffered at the hands of this other than through smoking cigarettes um, but in my family I have and continue to fight that fight so I'm with you in spirit and heart and regardless of political opinions I truly hope that you you get to the point that you need to be at and continue uh, to make progress in your efforts to sobriety um, your article brought me to tears and uh, as well as my secretary so I'm so proud of you and uh, I will support you uh, anytime you need anything always feel free to reach out to us at the commissioner's office because I would be uh, happy to help in any way that I can uh, that you feel would be helpful to you and congratulations and a great job and so proud of, of where you what you've achieved thank you for letting the public know it takes a lot of guts and courage uh, to tell people what you're going through like that and uh, I just can't say enough about how proud I am of you and uh, thank you for sharing your story. 
Um, but I would encourage people to read his article. It's Chris Kelly, Grateful Columnist Takes First Steps into a Life of Sobriety. And uh, it's heart-wrenching. It's, it's just beautiful. And I'm so... Really great story. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, as far as the uh, issues that are coming up with, um, with the uh, medical marijuana, um, I don't have... Everybody that knows me knows I don't have a whole lot of patience. Um, that is one of my faults, and I think all of you here can you know, look at commissioners laughing, Commissioner Terriani. I get uh, very passionate about issues that I, I am uh, passionate about. That's, that's all I could say. Um, you know, I have, as I said, been brought up in a, a family that chose to raise me, literally pulled me out of a home of abusive people that weren't even my parents, that were drunk and on drugs, um, saved my life saved my life. A 15 and 16 year old person saved my life. I'm here today because of that. Um, you know, everybody has a story. And for other people to assume uh, that they know better than the one that they're condemning um, is what happens in society today. Um, and out of respect for the people that were at that that s seminar, um, I left because I didn't want to interrupt their meeting. So um, I didn't feel that I could sit through all of that and uh, respect the discussions that were going on because I've heard them all. I've heard them. I've I've been to many of their meetings, many, many, many of their meetings. In addition to that, I had other, other meetings I had to go to. So anyway. Um, you know, on the weekend, we have multiple places we have to go. So um, when people say that, you know, they believe something works or they've, they've seen it work or they've used it and it worked, it doesn't make it a fact for everyone. The problem with marijuana is that there has not been any scientific studies at the federal level to prove or disprove its efficacy and safety, period. There's not been any. Yes, there's been anecdotal studies. Yes, there have been people that have used it. Yes, it's been used in California. But along with that, we have seen people that have uh, been harmed by it. We have seen deaths due to marijuana, but they don't want to talk about the deaths that have uh, occurred because of marijuana. They don't want to talk about an 11-month-old baby that ingested it and died of cardiac arrest. They, they want to, instead, when people speak up, what, what happens is they are attacked by a whole bunch of people from across areas that they speak in to stifle their free speech. This has got to stop. You have got to stop harassing people who, who talk and speak their mind. Everyone has the right to speak. What you don't have the right to do is condemn and attack people who use their freedom of speech. That is not right. You can't have a conversation with anyone if you're going to automatically go on the attack and try and destroy someone. But that's what's happening in society today across the country and here in Lackawanna County. There's no reason for it. And, and people are going to say things on their personal Facebook pages that you don't like. I'm sorry to tell you, but it's, it's just a fact of life. But you have to start having a conversation with people. You don't go around trying to destroy their lives because of something they said. Since when did, did society come up to this point where, you know, we could just go and try and destroy someone's name or character or anything else just because of a statement made on Facebook? How is that reasonable? Where is the discussion in that? There's, there's no discussion in that. You know, just because you kids have a lot of kids out there that know how to use the internet and have you shared, the, you shared that post that was not mine. I didn't share it. I shared it on my page, my personal page. That's the only place I put that was on my personal page. You all went to my personal page where you aren't even friends of mine and took a copy of that stuff and shared it across the internet to destroy somebody period. Because you don't think that I should have my freedom of speech or my opinion. You disagree with what I say, so I must be wrong. 
Maybe I am wrong, but that doesn't give you the right to hurl accusations at a person. And I'm sorry, but that is that is a problem, and that is harassment. Shh. Please excuse her. Uh, no, I didn't say I'm wrong, and I said maybe I am if if these studies come out differently. But the fact of the matter is, is that you all need to start uh, changing the way you handle your disagreements with people because it's not, it's not very that. What you all did is harassment and bullying. Now, you all are supposed to be fighting against this, but yet you go out and do it. It's not right. It's not right. I, I'm, I'm, you had your time to talk, and I'm talking now. So um, the fact of the matter is, is that if you don't like something on my personal page, come and talk to me about it. You could, you could come and have a meeting with me any time of the week. I have no problem with that. And I have never had a problem defending my positions on anything that I discuss. And everybody up here knows it. Everybody in this county knows it. Um, and you aren't going to bully me into changing my mind about an, uh, a drug that I disagree be becoming recreational. Nobody is. I have seen the effects of, of marijuana. I have watched it. I have seen friends and family use it, and I know what it does. I'm not an idiot. I've seen it. And... Um, it's not, it's not as safe as you all say it is. I've seen that the, the heart rates of people that have used it go up to 130 beats per minute. It does have major side effects cardiac-wise, and, and there are dangers to it. And ingestion is even worse. So um, I'm sorry, I'm going on. But, uh, you know, and I, I'm so sorry because, you know, we have something that we really needed to talk about. Um, are we ready or? Okay. Um, that is much more important to me right now. I would just like to uh, wish Commissioner Patrick O'Malley a happy 50th birthday party. Party. <laughs> Commissioner did not tell anyone that it was his his birthday, and this is his 50th birthday. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> what I was smiling about was when you said. Uh, I don't have patience. Yeah. I thought that's what that was an it's true. amusing remark. <laughs> so I think at this time I would like to give the remaining of my time that I have to Commissioner O'Malley to celebrate his 50th birthday. <laughs> and everybody in the public, please wish Commissioner O'Malley a happy 50th birthday. Where's the black ones? <laughs> <laughs> so we went St. Patrick's Day. Right. Speech. Okay. Uh -huh. Where's the candles? Okay. <laughs> Who has a lighter? I do. Wait, wait one second, Mark. I do want to get this out real quick. Uh, Go ahead. You do we that. We are having, we are having our Easter party at McDade Park, which will be Saturday, April thirteenth, four to seven years of age, eleven thirty to twelve fifteen, and eight to twelve. Years of age, 1230 to 115. Anybody has any questions, 963-6764. And I'd just like to wish, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and safe parade day and St. Patrick's Day. And uh, please make sure you get Good downtown. Awesome. The parade is second to none. The mass is at 10 a.m. And um, at 1155, the parade steps off. It's such a great day. Please come out, enjoy it. And I'd just like to thank everyone. I'd like to thank the administration, everyone, for the, the 50th birthday cake. And uh, it was totally unexpected. And, jeez, uh, uh, I'm lost for words, actually. Make thank a wish. You, thank you very much. Happy birthday to you. We're going back to 49 for a long time. Um, at this time, I, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. To <laughs> okay, do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Thanks, Mr. Thanks, guys. Everyone, thank you. Thanks. <laughs>